to Doubletree by SeaWorld for the Hurricane Who convention. If you couldn't tell by our t-shirts, it's a Doctor Who convention. If you're unfamiliar with the show Doctor Who, it's a British sci-fi TV series celebrating its 50th anniversary this month, and it's all about an alien who travels through time and space inside a blue police box. Let's go see if it's bigger on the inside. Do you need any socks? I I could I mean I could use socks. Tell me about your screwdriver. Um, it's blue, which is my favorite color, well the light part. And then it has some Gallifreyan writing right here. What's that say? I actually do not know because I still need to learn Gallifreyan. Wait, you're not an actual time lord and you're in possession of a sonic screwdriver. I mean, his companions used it in the show. Where's the doctor? Doctor Who potato head. I love this. It's a, it's a good likeness, don't you think? Yes, especially around the nose. All right, so one of the main parts of a Doctor Who convention, any convention, are the vendors. And remember here with Scott, who does a lot of great artwork based off Doctor Who and other properties, like genre properties. Some of these are based off certain episodes, right? Yes, there was an episode, a story arc, where the TARDIS exploded. And so our probably most popular feature this we have right now is uh, the exploded TARDIS sign. I love that, and you've got a, a TARDIS sign mirror over here, and these light-up signs. People could probably, you know, you can't own a, a full-size TARDIS, but these will do just fine. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants a TARDIS, but these kind of let people own a, an element of the TARDIS in their own home. I'm a huge fan of Disney as well as Doctor Who, so can you tell me how you got the idea for these Disney-Doctor Who mashups? Uh, I love Doctor Who, I love Disney. Um, it's peanut butter and chocolate. It's two things I love go great together, so I just take things I love and that my family loves and put it together and paint it and hopefully my kids enjoy it. <laughs> my wife is a big Disney Castle fan so I painted castles for her. Uh, I started with this one, it's uh, based off a picture of Walt's opening day in California. I always saw that him walking out of an archway and I thought he must be walking out of something. So I put a TARDIS there and then I kept going. That's actually based off of a, a picture from this year, Tokyo Disney. They got six inches of snow for the first time in 10 years. And you, if you look at the images online, it's breathtaking. They, they make you want to cry. As soon as I saw it, I was like, I have to paint it. All right, so costumes are a big part of any convention you go to. And here at the Doctor Who convention, I've got a Dalek next to me. And it's really ingenious how these costumes are built because you, know, you can use props from around your house. And I'm with Stephanie and Kathy. Uh, who built this Dalek costume, and what went into building this Dalek costume? Um, well, she has an electric wheelchair scooter underneath, and um, we basically combined things such as cardboard, wood, and um, play foam mainly, as well as styrofoam for the lid, to um, put together the Dalek over top of her scooter so she could drive around and be a part of the cosplaying. About how many hours would you say went into building this? Five months. <laughs> oh, wow. That's a lot of hours. <laughs> Lots of hours. Actually, I, I'm not sure how many hours, but five months. My brother-in-law and sister-in-law did a lot of the um, planning and hard work, and they would lug everything down from Jacksonville to Miami for, with us, and we'd work and troubleshoot all weekend. And they're both retired, so they spent many, many hours and many, many days and many, many months. <laughs> Our cosplay last year was a TARDIS and it was my first time to cosplay ever and she thought of it and she said you know you just follow me around in your scooter I could make a TARDIS over your scooter. Doctor Who is filled with iconic villains like the Cybermen and the Daleks. And don't forget my favorite are the Weeping Angels. They're uh, 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 Quinn. Speaking of which you might want to turn around and make sure you don't blink okay. I had to take a train two hours outside of London to a place called Tunbridge Wells. I don't know why we had to go out that way. Got there, and, uh, and it was in the middle of nowhere, a tiny little recording studio, and it wasn't until I saw this person come through the door in pajamas and with a cup of coffee that I realized it was Tom Baker, and he only lived about five minutes away, so that's the reason we were all doing it that far outside of London. So it was nice to work with him, uh, um, having, you know, having been a fan of his for some time, which was great. And then recently, also working with Matt Smith, it was, a, it was the second one that he'd ever done, so he was still a little nervous and twitchy as regards what he was doing. So, but he was very welcoming uh, and very enthusiastic and very inventive, and we had a great time, so yeah. When I finished it, I thought that that was going to be the end, but then I got this rather pleasant 
experienced when a script came through the door and it was for another episode. The trouble came when I opened up the script and I couldn't understand a word of what it said. A really complicated script. I, I, I didn't know what it meant. So uh, I rang the director at the time and said, look, I'm thrilled I'm doing this, but I have no idea what it means. And he said, well, he hadn't any idea either. So the two of us would just get together and, you know, see how we got on with it. And that's what we did. Now, Doctor Who's celebrating 50 years uh, this month and such a long time for, for any TV show. And what's it like to be a part of such a historic TV show? No, of course, it's a rare privilege. Um, you know, it's a show that's been going, as you say, for 50 years. 12 actors will have played my part quite soon because the 12th has just been announced. Mm -hmm. I'm slap bang in the middle, number six. So I am the kind of the belly of the program. Uh, how appropriate. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> men, of, men of a like spirit. Uh, yeah, it's arguably one of the best, most successful programs on British television. Mm -hmm. um, and the fact that there's enough American citizens who want to celebrate it too is a tribute to the success of the program. Yeah, agreed. And what do you think of Capaldi's casting? I think Capaldi's a great idea. He's an actor I've admired for years. And he's a grown-up, not like these 12-year-olds we've had <laughs> lately. He's a guy who's done something and been somewhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I agree. Um, with your, with your colourful costume, you got one of the most colourful costumes in Doctor Who history. Was that, was that something they just sprung on you, or did you have a, uh, a hand in the design process? I had no hand whatsoever. <laughs> I had my body in the design, but not in the process. Uh, no, I wanted something black. Mm -hmm. uh, something like what Christopher Eccleston got. That's what I quite fancied. Uh, so it struck me that this guy, the doctor, might want to, on occasion, pass unnoticed through places. Not a hope wearing that. <laughs> not a hope. So what I wanted was basically what uh, Keanu Reeves had in The Matrix. I thought that would suit me nicely. The long black coat, you know, mm -hmm. swirling a bit. Yeah. In the wind, looked very dramatic. Yeah, yeah. dodging bullets. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it for Hurricane Who this year. Now, it is an annual convention, and there are already plans to return to the Doubletree next year from October 31st to November 2nd. And there's so much more than the show floor you saw today. There's panels, there's Q&As, and a lot of stuff to see. I was just thinking, since the TARDIS is here, and we missed last year's convention, let's just go there right now. I think that's a great idea. Let's go.